We back at it again with the Founders Show. You know what I'm saying? We took a hiatus. We's at MIA. We back up here freezing cold. You know what I mean? We coming to y'all with this. another exclusive one. Tell you the level always get high every time we come to the table. You know what I'm saying? We got a distinguished gentleman in the building. You know what I mean? Yeah, Reese Black. We got my man Rob Morgan in the house. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate One of the appreciate. best actors you might not know about yet, but I'm pretty sure oh, you're wow. gonna find out. You know what I mean? Oh wow! You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, we met in Virginia State. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had a lot of friends. My man Vince. You know what I mean? God rest his soul. We had adventures with Vince. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, alone without yeah, like my brother. Yeah, they went on adventures without me. Yeah. It's Brownsville. Oh, wow. <laughs> late night, late night Brownsville. Yeah, man. Yeah. Been... But this guy right here, man, he's in the movies. You seen him. If you, you're not under rock, so you seen him, you know what I mean? You're gonna let him spit his spit, you know what I mean? Tell people a little something about. How you get down out here? Yeah, in man. the streets. Yeah. Like, like how you got into acting? Cause I knew you back then, and I, I he was we had no ink. Like, <laughs> you know, we three dice and then went to the bridge and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. doing that kind of dialing. Yeah, God rest his soul. Oh man, man. Yeah, man, that was my dude too. E, whatever happened to evil? I still hang with E. Yeah, yo, I was thinking that because I was today, I was like, yo, I'm gonna ask my man, where's E? Yeah. I ain't seen E. I'm gonna get you in contact with E. Tell that dude I said what's up, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get you in contact with him. You know me, I hang with all of Virginia State heads still. You know what I mean? Mall Money, Gary, E. Oh, man. You know, Bella. Yeah. Kyle. That's all the dudes I went to uh, homecoming with last Yeah, year. man. I saw a hint. Oh, hey, where you at, bro? Hey, doing hey, big things. Yeah, hey, hey, doing big, big things, things man. State, man. We just yeah, all my man, Chef Dudley. Wow, wow. We got the old farmer's market. Wow. We got the old farmer's market. He doing, he doing it down there like that. The homie yeah. head. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they with them snow beaches. Yeah. Set those exactly. out, man. That's good. Jason Jackson, too. He killing that. That's my man. Jason Jackson yeah. killing the game, yeah. man. He had the uh, Nina Simone. Yeah. Documentary, the Lauren Hill success, yeah. man. So, you know, everybody doing a little something. Doing a little something, still, something. We still, you know, and that's still what, the family. And that's man. what got me here with you. And honestly, man, I think like that translates into like how that moment of us being at state, it was something special down yeah, there, man. Right. The, yeah. the camaraderie, the the attitude, the the go get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, Help me survive, and I'm helping you survive. That's just how we do it. What years was this? What years was this? Well, I was there from '91 to '95, uh, and you know, I was, I was down there early. I was down there '89. You know? but, but I also I used to road trip down there from high school because I knew like cats like Rodney Garrett, you know, uh, Craig Galloway. And all those cats was all in the yes state. Yeah. So me and like this cat Daryl Redden, we jump in the Pathfinder and just go down there just to rock on campus because Virginia State, the homecoming was legendary. Oh yeah. It is still legendary. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So we'd actually bypass Howard to go to Virginia <laughs> State, you know, for the homecoming yeah. and rock out in high school. So uh, all of that is, is what drives me today. You know what I mean? Because Virginia State University actually saved my life. You know what I mean? I thought I was going to be a little street cat doing my thing thing, you know, thinking a couple hundred dollars was a lot, but not realizing I wasn't doing nothing but cheating myself out of living a real good life, a quality life where I can actually contribute to the world. And I, I realized that when I got to Virginia State University and saw all these beautiful black and brown men and women conducting themselves with this 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 moral attitude uh, that was high but at the same time you know getting it, you know and not not out there because I was guest jeans suited down polo rugby down polo the hat the polo the boots you know I was out there thinking I was getting it you know what I mean but then when I got to state and I saw this cat walk by in a damn bow tie and some penny loafers with some khakis on <laughs> With the baddest woo woo on the yard, shout out to the woo woo. Woo woo's was the cheerleaders. Word up, shout out to the woo woo. It was like, oh, what? What am I really doing? What am I right? doing? <laughs> you know, man. And I stopped doing the dirt because you know I ain't want to bring that down to school. I did try it one time, but this cat and I was like, well, instead of me doing something crazy down here where I don't know nobody, let me get my life together and get straight and work on my 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 human being. 
You know what I mean? For me, it was pretty much the same, man. Like, getting out of Brooklyn, I, I started seeing that I, I, I never thought, like, I could see. Like, you know, I thought it was Brooklyn, Brownsville, Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. This is how it is. Didn't even want to go to state. Yeah. Didn't want to leave here because I'm like, what am I doing down there? Yeah. And then, you know, Mom Duke, shout out to Mom Duke. Oh, man, she shout said, out to Mom for You big. don't. Miss B. <laughs> I went there and, like I said, I met some of the friends for the rest of my life. Right. Baby, man, right. Rock down there. You got chicken? Yeah, I got rice. Right. Let's get this together and make this meal. Right. You know, yeah. and everybody did a little something for everybody, man. That's how it was, man. Yeah. That's why we still. To this day, man. Shout out to the homegirl Tasha from Virginia State. Oh man, the ladies of Virginia State was just woo. They held us down, lovely man. Yeah. So many ways. Yeah. All oh, the River Road ladies, the Crater Crater Ridge Crater Ridge ladies, yeah. the women yeah. ladies, yeah. everybody out there, man. I mean, all their names just all over the place. But uh, that is what gave me the opportunity to get on the radio station with Virginia State University. I used to do the radio, 91.3 WVST, the overnight joint. And that kind of gave me the exposure of being a voice. Right. You know what I mean? And how to handle being a voice. And I, you know, I've never been the kind of look at me, look at me, look at me guy. But you know, people knew that I was the guy doing the, the radio station. Yeah. So that kind of got me to comfortable, com being comfortable with being a presence and a voice. So after college, I pursued radio, but uh, uh, they were, it's a hard market to get into. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going, you know, dirt not, you know, people or nothing right, like that. Right. But it's a hard market to get into. And yeah. I figured, well, instead of me getting jerked around in D.C., I can go to New York and get jerked around. You know what I mean? Right. But shit, New York is where, you know, if you want to make it imprint on the world, you come to New York and do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so, at the same time, I was chasing this little young lady named uh, Margaret Terry, and I hope, I say her name all the time, because I'm hoping one day some interview she'll see it and reach out. But Margaret Terry, I was chasing her, and she was like, well, uh, I got this, this open call at uh, this Marriott in D.C., so you want to come? You know, I think you should come check it out. And I was like, what's an open call? Well, just come on, check it out, see what it is. You know, I think you might like it. I said, all right, cool. So I go to this open call, which is basically like a cattle call for actors, you know, background. It's big, big like the casting background. Right. So I go there, and I'm like, wow, where are all these beautiful women coming from? i never seen it. I'm from here and I've never seen you, I've never seen you, I've never seen you. What the hell? What is this? Alright, sir, do you have a picture of picture and resume? No, I don't, what the, well, I don't know the picture. Alright, sir, uh, you step behind the table and take your picture. Alright, cool, take my picture, but damn, I never saw you look at the camera. Okay, I'm looking at the camera now. She take my picture, right? I'm like, Margaret, where are all these beautiful ladies people coming from? Like, she's like, oh, this is, you know, this is the acting, you know, casting, uh, extras casting, people just show up in droves, and, you know, if you're lucky to get picked, you get some work. So we was working in the insurance firm as uh, data entry folks at the time, and so back then, you know, it was like, uh, uh, you give your, your phone number, we didn't have emails yeah, and all yeah. that stuff, right? So uh, the very next day, she comes up to my desk, she's like, did they call you? And I was like, who? Like, you don't forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, like, I was like, who? Like, what are you, the people. I was like, nah, nah, did they call you? No, nah, no, nah, okay, all right, cool. Next day she goes, Rob, did they call you? I'm like, Mark, who? No, what? No, who? The people, no, they didn't, did they call you? No, nah, all right, cool. So next day you know, my phone rings. Next day, yeah, you like to speak to Rob Morgan. Yeah, this is Rob Morgan. Yeah, we got, uh, you know, five days background extra for this movie contact you know we'd like for you to be on board with it i said all right five days background extra i didn't even know what any of that any of that meant <laughs> so i was like all right we well, got to get up this time in the morning and catch the bus here to get dropped off there to catch that bus to get dropped off here and then you know uh we'll have somebody direct you and i was like okay cool so you gotta write all this down at the time it wasn't like oh can you email me that or text me that like all right write it down you had to be diligent it was a whole different grind so then I run over to her, this Margaret, did they call you? And she's like, nah, I said, well, they called me. She's like, really? <laughs> yeah, they called me. She's like, oh, shit, what happened? I said, well, they got five days back, go, go. I was like, all right, what, yeah, all right, I'll go. So I just went and, you know, just, just vibing and, and being quiet and listening, man, is what got my
over because I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what was going down. You didn't know what you're supposed to be doing. What supposed to be doing. I just knew, you know, hey, I was a background extra for five days. That was the job. Now I got thrusted into this world where everybody's talking about trying to, you know, work this theater show or this TV show or this movie. And I'm just sitting there just listening, just taking it in, you know, like my man Disco right now, just taking it in. You know, I'm like, okay. And then, like, by the third, fourth day, you know, I started uh, listening about what the movie was about. People started trickling down information about what the movie was about. And I was thinking, well, damn, I don't know if I've been on camera yet. You know, my mom needs to see me. I want my mom to see me. How am I going to get on camera? So I, I see them place this guy with long white hair right over there. And I'm like, okay, I need to be there. I go stand in this spot for like five hours. I didn't move. Mm -hmm. I just stood there like, just stood there. Sidewalk, people walking by me. I just didn't yeah. move. Because I was like, I, I know this the goal right here. This the spot. So I was sitting there. The next thing you know, they started building the setup around me. And I was like, oh shit. Next thing you know, the guy with the long white hair popped up right here. And I was like, okay. My mom was gonna see me. And that's, <laughs> that's what's up. And they was like, okay, this is the scene where Jody Foster walks in to ask the president for more money. You know, and I was like, well, okay. And listening to, you know, just being quiet and listening to what was going on around me and digesting that information, I said, well, me being a cat from, you know, D.C., Northern Virginia area, how would I feel if somebody came here to ask for millions of dollars to do out of space exploration when our kids ain't even got no books in our schools? You know what I mean? Like, no, hell no. Action! First, they let Jody walk by in the background, you know, they tell you to mind because you can't really interrupt their dialogue. So that's something I learned right on the spot too. The hell is my mind? Okay. <laughs> right? That take. Alright, couple takes of that. Alright, background. Now this time you can make you can make dialogue, you know, you can make some dialogue. I said, okay, how? But I feel, okay, I don't know how. I'm gonna got some dialogue. <laughs> they say dialogue. They say you can make noise. But Virginia State, I'm thinking, all right, how can I make this better? How can I enhance this? How can I put that Trojan love on this shit? How can I put that black man sprinkle on this? You know what I mean? And so uh, action. And instead of the other background people, they was making inaudible noises that really. What can you do with it? They were saying shit like that. The man was like, get a real job. They ain't nothing out of space. Don't waste my tax dollar. Like, 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 they say, you know, the guy with the long white hair was Jake Busey. He looks down at me, he said, you're creative. I said, hey, man, I'm just trying to get some burn, man. He said, well, keep it up, man. Keep it up. You're going to do it. I said, all right. They say, you know, a microphone pops up over my head. Mm. And I was like, oh, oh that's dope. Mm. The microphone pops mm. up over my head. And mind you how casual he just threw Jody Foster in like, you know what I mean? Jody Foster major. That's oh, major. Yeah. He just casually said, you know Jody. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Won't be in a movie with Jody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said Jody. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but really, man, um, that next thing you know, I go over there, you know, I'm so green now, I know it's called Video Village, but I pretty much just walked over to where the, vi the videos and stuff were, and I'm looking right over Robert Zemeckis' shoulder, like, like he the table, and I'm like, I'm looking at the, the screen, because he's checking out the playback, and he looks up at me, and he just go, just like that, right, and I was like, looking at the screen, like, oh my God, seeing myself on the screen, so fast forward, about six months later, you know, the movie edit come out, and I go to see it, and I'm by myself. And next thing you know, I I, I, I hear my voice. That's that gotta be dope. And then I, I see my face, and hear my voice in my face. And I, oh, I jumped up, man. And then they hit the, the ceiling of the theater, man. I jumped so high, and I came down. So I was like, you know, I didn't even know if anybody saw me. I ain't, you know, I was just like, oh. Shit. And I just had that fix ever since then. It was like, yo, I got that's me right there. I need to do that more. Well, no, that's that's really been the, the shot in the arm that kept me going for 21 years.
You know, it take 21, you know, people tell you, uh, uh, t take 21, 20 years to become an overnight success. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like after putting all that in, but that, that one experience carried me through. Like, all I could do is keep imagining and feeling that right, feeling. Right. And the more and more, could that part get longer and longer yeah. and longer and longer? Yeah, but I, I say that to say, you know, to anybody out there, because somebody must have needed to hear that story, because, yes. you know, People, people sometimes might overlook those moments that, right. that can really identify who you are, who you're going to become. You know what I mean? But you just got to be open and sensitive enough to feel it. And that's by the grace of God. That's what happened to me. And uh, that's when I made that decision. And, and it hasn't been an easy 21 years, but, you know, I've had fun. You know what I mean? I'm blessed. I'm here right now with y'all, brother. That's Jackson. why you're here, brother. Yeah, That's man. why you're here. Each one, teach one. You know what so I mean? So what, what, what were some of the earlier projects after after the uh, contact movie that you did? You mean all the like set like fifty that you never heard about and would never see? Fifty in the, in the independent no, film. But I, I know you was in a uh, uh, Stranger Things. So yeah. Like, yeah, yeah people hear hard. about the Stranger Things and the Luke Cages the Luke and the Cage. Daredevils Luke Cage. and the Punishers and the Defenders the Punisher. and the Godlesses and the, the, the Mudbounds and the, the Person of Interest and the, the Law and Order. And the, people hear about those because those get exposure, but people don't hear about the independent films like Full Circle I did, which was right there in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Shout out to my man Solomon Naeem, Slick the Misfit. Put New York City on, the, particularly Brooklyn, in a big way on the map historically to be the first uh, youngest ever filmmaker, writer, producer, director, and to lead in his own movie in New York City at like 20 That's years old. At 20 years old. That's dope. Shout him out again, man. Oh Shout man, Solomon Naeem. Oh, now the brothers the directing stuff like Blacklist, Power. Uh, uh, one of the John Singleton shows, uh, Snowfall, you know, now the brother's rocking, you know, and, and I had the, the, the fortunate uh, opportunity to be in his first film, which is Full Circle, and I played this cat, Low Maddie, which is like this neurotic gangster, and it was on Netflix for like two years, they just took it down, mm -hmm. but people don't hear about those kind of projects or the, you know, uh, uh, the Taliba Newman project I did, which was on HBO, which was a short film. You know, like the shorts that you do to get your, your instrument strong. And, you know, they don't hear about being at American Theater of Harlem and, and, and doing plays like, you know, that, you know, only like maybe 50 to 100 people might show up to, but then it's never to be talked about again. You know what I mean? So, but those are those grinding elements that make uh, you more prepared and, and more in tune to your instrument and what you're trying to do so that when Stranger Things calls you, you can show up and knock it out the park. Or you can show up and, and, and play with everybody on their level. Right. You know right. what I mean? Uh, Mudbound, D. Rees, who, Pariah, I did her first film with her called Pariah. D. Rees is the uh, co-writer and director of Mudbound. Mudbound. You know what I mean? But. Um, yeah, talking about Mudbound. Oh man, oh, yeah. I, I see those those like he said those little plays and those little things that <laughs> that he did to, to sharpen up his craft. I, I see that it worked out. Man. Oh, man. When I saw you at Mudbound and the <laughs> dialect, the, the way you were speaking, <laughs> and I'm like, with all Mary, 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 yeah, Mary, yeah, yeah, Mary yeah, J. Yeah, Rod, when, when Jackson, my wife, when, yeah, yeah, he when I saw that. Like, I like, in the movie. I just yeah. seen it. We just watched it because I ain't see it. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna find. It. I wasn't up on it, but I'm up on it now. When I get home later on, you know, I'm, I'm go all in, yeah. watch all them joints. But his body work is crazy, man. His body work is crazy, I heard man. The, the dialect. Right. Dialect, like, you know, put it, like, well, I must say that's a shout out to Tim Monich, who was the dialect coach of that, and he basically supplied me with like four different Mississippi black men voices, and I had the opportunity to, you know, and that's part of your craft is being able to listen and imitate and, you know, imagine and put yourself in it, you know what I mean? And and, and I was down there for two months in New Orleans. Uh, and we shot on the actual plantation land. So, you know, it's, it, it, it was easy actually to get thrusted into that. You know, once you're uh, tapped into the character. My character name was Hat Jackson. You know, I definitely wanted to bring brothers like Hat Jackson back. 
you know, make them make them cool again. You know what I mean? And I can imagine being on the plantation and oh, then the thoughts you get like, it was like this. Wow. Like, and yeah. Getting those feelings from from that period of time as you playing that character, oh, I can imagine. Yeah, and D Reed, she selected a lot of uh high level people that was good in their what they do. So like David Bamba recreated that whole world for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The set designer. Yeah, you right, know what right. I mean? Like so yeah, yeah, it was like the moment you put the wardrobe on and stepped into that, it was it was kinda like thrusting you right back into it and it, you know, yeah, it was it was a fun project, man. It was fun. I mean as as hard as it looks like for an actor to get uh quality material, you know, well written material where especially for a black male that's written uh complete. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times our images images aren't complete. They're either one way or no way. And I feel like Hap Jackson, the character of Mudbound, he had an opportunity to be a human being, show some some anger, some love, some, you know, vulnerability, you know, show his human spirit. And so I really, you know, enjoyed that. So it made it fun. Yeah. And I, I watched it with my <clears throat> daughter. It, it, I oh, had wow. to watch it twice because I watched it with my daughter and that's just Answering question, question and answer. So yeah. you know, oh, pause wow. and talk about. So you know, I had to yeah. watch it twice. Yeah, man. The thing about that <coughs> is, uh, you know, some people already mentioned they want to add it into their like school curriculum. You know, that's how much they feel the movie. That's what's up. Um, you know, <coughs> uh, expresses the American experience and, and it expresses it uh, from a time of that Jim Crow era. You know, that sharecropping era which informs a lot of the relations on black and white now, I think, yeah. you know, today, because it was that period where basically you just had to, even though you just got out of bondage, and now you just got to work and work and work and for and it nothing. Like it's the same <laughs> thing. Same and it seemed like it's the same thing, you know just called something else. Something right? else, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in that, that period, we rarely see in American cinema, if, if at all. And, all, and the beauty about Mudbound is that it captured that white folks are sharecropping too. Definitely. You know what Definitely. I mean? And that's a, a thing that people probably really don't know, but. Word. And, and they wasn't that good at it. <laughs> Check the movie, you see what I'm talking about. Right. But, you know, man, I think that's part of one of the, the boots on uh, minority black and brown people in America's neck is that, that I did it. It could always be like, oh, well, you pick cotton. You were a slave. You've been oppressed. And no, but look, you've been picking some cotton too. Mm -hmm. You were a slave too. You've been oppressed too. So now that we got that out of the way, you know, let's deal with each other one on one and hopefully something like this movie Mudbound can create that kind of safe space and dialogue so we can start getting some healing, man, so yeah. brothers can just work it out and be left alone. <laughs> and that's why I definitely watch it with my daughter, because, you know, mm. I, watch that, I, I watch that movie. I want her to ask those questions, and I want her to learn that from here before mm -hmm. she had all the external things from, you know, outside and, and school history, yeah. you know, so yeah. stuff yeah. She, she wouldn't learn in school, so I really like that, man. Yeah, I really did. Thank so, so I, I also know that you um you, you just completed a new project with uh RZA, right? Yeah, RZA, man. This is the man. Actually, you gave me the sweatshirt, man. The Wu Wei out here supporting the brother. They bringing out the Wu Wei brand, kind of heavy. So you know, yeah, RZA's a cool. What's dude. the name of that? Uh, the it's called Cutthroat City. Uh, shot in New Orleans. Got a, a slew of, of of people in it from. Uh, Shamik Moore, the young man from Dope and the Get Down, uh, oh, Demetrius oh, Ship, yeah. young man who played Tupac, uh, Ken Johnson, uh, uh, Denzel Whitaker, young man from um, Damn, what was the old Denzel movie man uh, where they had the spelling bee contest? Uh, great debaters, oh, right. not the, the great debaters, uh, Denzel Whitaker. Uh, uh, Isa Gonzalez, a uh, young lady from uh, Baby Driver. Uh, Terrence Howard, you know Terrence Howard. Isaiah Washington. Uh, okay. Wesley Snipes. So, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, cats in there throwing it around. So uh, that was a great experience. And this is like, you know, a great director to work with. Um, you know. Uh, so he directed it, he did the score as well? Oh, and uh, T.I. is in it too. T.I. is in it. Uh, I don't know who's doing the score. I know he's doing that. I know RZA do a lot of working on oh, scores for the movie, in it, man. So, uh, yeah, oh, he's deep in it, man. The brother's talented, uh, making movie-wise and musically. Yeah. And I got, I bought a, uh, a baby guitar while I was down there because I did that <laughs> with my per diem sometimes just so I can, you know, not throw it all away, have something to bring home. And uh, I got him to sign my guitar, so he signed my guitar for me. You know, uh, we played some games of chess, had a good time, man. So he's a real good dude. And, and, and from your yeah. post, I, I guess you lost, huh? In, in yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he got me. He actually got me in the chess game. His student, you know, this, he had this brother there named uh, Church, you know, young young rapping brother. Uh, he had lock horns uh, on the chessboard. I was able to slap him around, but Riz is actually, he can, he can rock, man. Yeah, he, right. He's a strong chess player, man. Good, I gotta man. give it to him. He's a, he's a scientist for real, for real. Yeah. He don't just talk it, he be doing it. So, yeah. That's what's up. Shout out to the Wu. Yeah, no doubt. All day, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So that's good. So, like I said again, my man Rob Morgan, he involved out there, man. Check for him, man. Like I said, Mudbound, <laughs> Stranger Things. Yeah. All the things you know about it, maybe you could catch some of the things that you don't know about. And, and I just did this project with uh, Adam Sandler and uh, mm. Chris Rock and Steve Buscemi called uh. Uh, The Week Of. That's going to be a comedy. That's another Netflix project, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's coming out. This is major. This is got, major right here. Get two some, feet in. Got something called uh, Monsters and Men. Uh, by Reynaldo Green that's coming out uh, for Sundance. I'll be at Sundance, what, next month? Yeah, January, that's soon coming. Yeah, soon coming. yeah so uh, we got our foot on the pedal, man. We just blessed and know God is great. You know, we just got to show up prepared. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's really the, the key to it all, in my opinion, is just show up prepared and have fun. And like, you yeah. know, uh, if actors want to ask me, you know, some advice, first thing I tell them is, one, you have to love and embrace rejection. If you can't love and embrace rejection, this <laughs> business is not for you. That's the first line, I gotta tell you. And then secondly, uh, you, you, you gotta take care of yourself. Like your mental, your physical, your spiritual, and your emotional health is key. Because the game is always gonna be there. It's gonna always be another stranger thing. It's gonna always be another mud down. But it's only one Rob Morgan, it's only one Disco, it's only one Reese. If you take care of that, then by the time your number is called, you show up, you knock it out of the park. But if you can't <coughs> maintain yourself, take care of you, so that you have something to offer when your number's called, what are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Be like unprepared. <laughs> and you'd be unprepared, but but the key is to take care of yourself. Like really take care of your your mental, your spiritual, your physical, and emotional health. That's key, man, because you can go months without working. I won a SAG award, and I ain't worked mm -hmm. for seven and a half months. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, to somebody, that could be a, a mental beatdown. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That could be a real mental beatdown. You know what I mean? And I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was pissed off. I was still pissed <laughs> You're like, off. like, I won the SAG. Word. And I ain't working Word. tomorrow. Word, but you know, that that's the game, though. Yeah. But instead of like going into that uh what's the the the, the downward hole what's the, the sunken Ocean place instead of going into the sunken place get out instead of going into the sunken place i basically just worked on me i stayed working out stayed playing chess you know stayed drinking my water stayed having fun living my life doing my thing you know what i mean and staying prepared so that when my number was called i showed up and Bomb. There it is. There it yeah. is. You know, that's really the two things I say. And all yeah. this transpired from school. Go to school. Right. You know what I mean? School is important. You can't do shit without that diploma. Yeah. Education, boy. Cause education made all that shit happen for him. You know what I mean? He started yeah. from, from the bottom and he's up. And all the way up. And, and no doubt, to piggyback that, like high school, middle school, elementary school, for young black men in particular, it's just not designed.
for our genetic makeup. It's not designed. So it can be a real big turnoff, especially after like 12, 13 years old. Cause that's when peer pressure and shit comes into our community nice. real heavy. You know what I mean? So it can be a real big turnoff. But to get through that period and then get into a college that has beautiful people that look like you and care about you and really are concerned about your well-being, it's the most, it's the most beautiful thing to happen. To, to a brother like, at least for me, man, I know countless brothers that have the same testimony. And I'm like, yo, man, if we could just, like, instill in these young black men, man, look, man, just do whatever you got to do. I mean, I got through high school, like, I was probably like a D plus. <laughs> yeah, I ain't even going front. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But that's the beauty about Virginia State. They had an open door policy when I came, dog. Like, we were down there with cats that just got out. Cats that, yeah. you know, the Huxtables, cats that yeah. got body. We was down there with like it some real, yeah. yeah, it was different. But it was that open door policy and I'm yeah. so thankful for that because it gave me an opportunity to get out where I was at, to go there mm -hmm. and figure some stuff out about life. Definitely. And figure myself mm -hmm. out. You know what I mean? That's why I just want to tell the young brothers out, man, if you can, man, please go to an HBCU for your undergrad. Definitely. For your undergrad. You know, and then if you want to explore, you know, your grass, I can see that. But more than likely, after you get that undergrad experience, you even want to go keep that. Exactly, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Because even though I, I I never graduated from Virginia State, the, the things that I learned and saw and how people were, like people wasn't like that in Brooklyn. Like, mm. like I lost my apartment at one time and I was going to have to go back to New York mm. and that's it for school. Mm. My man Elliot, peace to my man Elliot, mm. he was like, what? Nah, you stay at my crib, man. Yeah. I'm going to be at my shorty crib and my room is your room, man. Mm. And, and that's how I continue to go to school because mm. a, a homie, like, you know, people don't do that in New York. Like, oh, you got to go? See you. <laughs> All right. <Do> Peace. <laughs> Remember, son was here, but yeah, he had to go. Like, your chair. He, he couldn't make chair. it, like, you know. And the <laughs> homie was like, yeah, take that. Like, nah. rent free at that. Like, yeah, so, you was, know. It was a thing. It man. was things that you saw, the camaraderie. And like I said, you that's what made me still friends and, and bros with these dudes to this day, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. They all used to come to my house. Everybody came to New York. Mm -hmm. Some people never been to New York a day in their life and the first time they came to New York was yeah. with me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> they they had that trust because we, right. we lived and survived together mm -hmm. in, in Virginia State, you know? Yeah, man. So I like, still hang with a lot of them. I, I was in Virginia, I, w I went to uh, D.C. It wasn't homecoming. Mm -hmm. Me and Ma, peace to Chris. We went to D.C. to hang with Chris uh, around the 4th of July one year, right? So we was in the spot and we ran in the hook. Oh, man. Man, if you would have seen Hook face when he seen <laughs> us together, like, how? Y'all still? Uh -huh. Ah, uh, that's like, dope. Yeah, we still rock, yeah. like, and then we rock with Hook in, in that spot that night. What like, Hook you know up to, man? He was chilling. You know what he was up to. I don't want to really tell you. Gotcha. you know, yeah. I don't know what he got going on, but Hook was still being Hook, you Hook know? And, 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 and he was having fun, man. And we enjoyed ourselves that night, and end of the weekend, we came back to New York. Oh, you know? man. It's like friendship is essential to the soul, man. Yeah. Me personally, I met a lot of dudes from the school. You know what I mean? All good dudes, word. I can't say I met one bad dude from down there. You know what I mean? All them dudes, they show mad love. You know what I mean? And it's all good. That's why we in here with the brother right here building. You know what I mean? He putting y'all on to game. You know what I mean? And it's how we giving it up on a cold night. <laughs> yeah, because it's cold outside. Happy New Year, baby. We yeah. let my man Rob, he, he, he got places to be. You know what I mean? Movies to make. Movies to make. It's my Instagram? Yeah, we need all My Instagram is Shadow Flack. S H A D O W F L A C K. That's Instagram or Twitter. Uh, Facebook is Robbie Morgan. You put your government on Facebook. That's where it's, it's like flowering. <laughs> I can, you can always tell how people know you by what they call you. And when somebody ever hear Robbie, I say, oh, that's a Facebook friend. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I know that. But uh, shout out to my man Ron O'Neill from uh, Virginia State, cause that's where Shadow Flag came from. You know what I mean? Oh, right. 
the, the shadow flag and it's stuck with me since and I've been rocking that name for ever since. So So check them out, man. Look them yeah. up. We doing big things, man. So that's how we doing it, my man Rob. BSU. This is how we do it. Right. The founder show. We the on session. the session TV. Appreciate you. Founder show. Shout out to the cameraman, Doc. Doc, you dog. And Shout out to Life Ho. Politics, usual brothers. Right. You know what I mean? Once again, we close this out. Every time we come to the table, the levels get higher, man. Levels get higher. It's never about negativity. We turning this into some negative, man. <laughs> Trying to uplift the babies. Word. Teaching the babies, you know what I mean? Word. I, I'm yes. glad y'all y'all let me in here because I said, man, we'll be in here with all this low. And I got this, <laughs> this blue wear shirt. I'm coming in here with this 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 army nah. surplus store jacket. And these brothers got these low. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. So good. But you know, I feel oh, comfortable. Know. Thank you. So you know, you can hang out with the low, exactly. man. Regular shit on too. Again, brother. it's not about the clothes. Right it's that. about the bros, man. Right right man. man. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Man. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. Okay. Like, appreciate you, black man. Appreciate oh, and I meant to say, and, and hopefully, we, 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 when you win them Oscars and all that, oh, we, we, we could get one of those exclusive interviews, too. Man. Be stayed all day, man. Yeah. Stand up. You already. All right.